That's pretty good. Hey, everybody. This is the Sam the Answer Man show, and I'm Gina, and this is, of course, I'm Sam, the Answer Man. So I wanted to talk to you about free speech. Okay. So can you give us a little background? Um, because allegedly you're some kind of expert. So well, tell me about that. Rights of free speech come from the First Amendment, the U.S. Constitution. Originally, it only applied to the federal government, but with the 14th Amendment passed after the Civil War, it was also applied to states and local governments. And basically it says that government is not going to create um, impediments to our freedom of speech. So what about like the NFL protests? So Does I, the First Amendment apply to Not those? really, because the First Amendment says Congress shall make no law. And as I said, it also applies to state and local governments as well, but it only applies to governments. The First Amendment, like all the other um, bill of rights provisions, requires state action. So even though the N in NFL stands for national, it's yeah. not a government agency. Yeah, that's agency. a private oh, okay. agency. I just wanted to clear that really, up. Not really part of the government, although it does seem like it. So does this mean you can speak whatever you want, wherever you want, whenever you want? Sort of. I mean, first of all, there can be regulation of speech, but it has to be what we call content neutral. So they can regulate what they call time, place, and manner. They can say, well, you can only speak in certain places, and you can't speak in some places if that's going to create other issues. For example, you can't be out on the street. You can't be blocking people. You can, and so the government has what are called time, place, and manner restrictions. But those have to be what is called contract neutral. They can't come after some people for their speech worse than others based upon what they're saying. So does that kind of apply to school walkouts? Well, that's a good point. So when kids want to walk out from school, the schools can say, no, you're not allowed to walk out from school. During school time, you're supposed to be here. As long as they do it content neutral. So if the kids are allowed to walk out um, they have they have to apply the same discipline they would to a kid if they walk out because of a protest as they would if they walked out for some other reason. On the other hand, they can't make it worse. They can't say, oh, I'm going to make you, um, I'm going to give you worse discipline because you walked out for a protest. So it has to be what we call content neutral. Uh, and Now, that's a pretty big legal word, content neutral. Right. Basically... It doesn't matter what they're saying. Is that in layman's terms? Yeah. In other words, they have to treat speech the same as other absences, and they have to treat one kind of speech the same as another. They can't say, "Oh, we're going to let the anti-gun protests go out," but if you go, if you want to protest your grades or against the teachers or something like that, then we're going to crack down. Then they wouldn't be content neutral. They can't do that. <gasps> Listen up, kids. That sounds like fun. So, <laughs> with that being said. And I'm just kidding, parents. Um, what about hate speech? Because some of what you talked about could qualify as hate speech. Well, see, hate speech is not really a recognized exception to the First Amendment. So if you're speaking um, really terrible, awful, racist things, those things are still protected by the First Amendment, even though they're bad. Because there really is no way to say, oh, we're going to say bad things are, are not okay. What good things are that would require somebody to make decisions about what's bad and what's not so there's no exception for hate speech what there is is a distinction between advocacy and incitement so i can say i really hate the president and i really think somebody should do him in and he's an awful guy that's all advocacy and i'm allowed to do that but if i said hey that trump guy he's got to go and i need you to go get him you know then it would be inciting violence, and that's not. And that's protected. an exception. Well, it's it's not protected by. We're the not. Person that's now. what I mean. And some of these distinctions, you know, they're hard to figure out. I mean, they, they say, okay, advocacy, incitement. Sometimes it's not easy to tell the difference. But that that is the sort of the criteria that the courts use in deciding what's protected freedom of speech. So basically, bottom line is the First Amendment protects what we say even stupid crap that people say even the stupid there's no the scale of stupid doesn't cause it to come off the first amendment what 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 makes it comes off the first amendment is if it's causing problems outside of the speech content itself if it's something that is blocking somebody or something like that that's going to bring it out of uh, protected speech or if it's inciting violence but stupidity is not a criteria for knowing whether something's protected by the first amendment
So what are the First Amendment applications for business owners? Because we're business owners. Oh, yeah. So like... You know, like somebody looking at this video might give us a bad review on Yelp or something. Don't do that. Give us a good one. But if they gave us a bad review and we went, let's say we wanted to sue them. Ah, these guys, they have this stupid podcast and it's stupid and they don't know what they're talking about. And I can't sue that person. That person's expressing. Now, why is that? Because they pissed me off. Why can't I? If why I'll, can't we sue them? If only we could sue everybody who pisses us off. But. The First Amendment protects the expression of opinions. And because they're just expressing an opinion based upon what everybody can see, that is not something that you can sue somebody for. It's going to be protected by the First Amendment. But if an opinion or if a statement on the internet is something that implies that they know facts, not generally know, like for example, they say, oh, we hired this law firm to come and, and take care of something for us and they didn't do it. Well, now they're expressing facts, and that is not protected by the First Amendment. And if I can prove that the factual assertions that they're making aren't true, I can say that they're defamations. So in this case, it's a distinction between facts and opinions. Okay. All right. Now, have there been any recent Supreme Court cases that have dealt with First Amendment or free speech issues? Well, we just had a big case out of the Supreme Court involving California had a regulation of abortion well, what they were called was abortion alternative clinics. And these places would try to talk people out of having abortions. And the uh, California legislature said, if you're going to have a place like this, we're going to make you put up a sign that says where abortions can be obtained and who you can call and how you can get an abortion. So um, the people complained about that. And successfully, in a 5-4 decision, the Supreme Court ruled that that would be compelling, it's called compelled speech. They can't do that. Because the government's asking, making them do it. Exactly. The government is making them give a, a, a message that they don't want to give. It's called compelled speech, and it was a violation of the First Amendment. But if it were, let's say, a particular religious order or someone who ran the clinics, and they said to the clinics, you have to do this, that doesn't, that's that, not protected. That, again, wouldn't person. involve state action. That would be the action of a private employer and employers can regulate their employee speech. Okay, I got one last question for you. So are there any important free speech cases regarding Colorado that have happened recently? Well, for example, one case that was in Colorado involved, um, remember I talked about time, place, and manner restrictions? Yes. So I don't know if you remember, but several years ago, the Rocky Mountain News had a policy where they would have people um, like homeless people standing on the islands of the streets. I remember that. And selling the Rocky Mountain News. And um, the uh, government of Aurora and Denver passed ordinances saying you can't do that. And the Rocky Mountain News says, hey, these people, we're, we're giving a, a message here, and these people are helping us convey our message. This is protected by the First Amendment. The cities actually won because they successfully argued that that was a valid time, place, and manner restriction. We're not saying you can't sell your papers, but doing it on the traffic islands is dangerous, and they were allowed to Because they didn't that. want people getting hit by cars. That's what they said, yeah. And the court found that that was a legitimate basis. Another thing that comes up is panhandling, and there was a case in Colorado involving a, the city of Grand Junction had passed an ordinance preventing people from panhandling. Now, panhandling, believe it or not, is protected First Amendment speech. Really? If, yeah, if I come up to you on the street and say, uh, you have money, and I don't, and so I want you to give me some of your money. That's the, a message that somebody's entitled to express under the First Amendment. So an ordinance that says no panhandling is, is going to be, and was found in that case to be a violation of the First Amendment. However, again, if they're blocking you, threatening you, harassing you, they can't do that. And that is not going to be protected by the First Amendment. But simply giving the message, give me some money, that's a protected First Amendment message. Awesome. Well, thank you, Sam. Well, thank you. And thank you for tuning in. And we'll see and you next time on Sam the Answer Man. And if you have any questions, we have, you can email us at sam at samventola.com. You can also post on our Facebook page. And you can also hit the, hit the Facebook like thing. Okay. <laughs>